Alerts was not supposed to encompass an update to the pinout, just the power supply. Uh, that was in 2022, and the change was in compliance with the IEC, which is the International Electrotechnical Commission, that issued a safety standard change, which, as we understand it, looking into it, is something that happens outside of EVGA. That's not an EVGA thing, that's an international commission thing. Uh, it kind of gets pushed out to everyone, mostly the factories. So, there's thus far, there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of this, making a change to a product to accommodate some new international spec or guideline, or like there's an EU requirement, whatever. That's, there's nothing wrong there. The problem came in when, uh, there's really no other way to describe it other than just a colossal fuck up where the factory, EVGA's factory, changed the pin out. This is both of their fault. This is EVGA's fault for not validating it uh, and trusting at face value. This is the factory's fault for swapping it. So that pin out change, not necessary, but it is what makes the power supply immediately problematic if you were ever to mix and match cables from one production run to another. And EVGA said that it was internally aware of this uh, and that over a year ago when this was all happening, it had put a plan in place to deal with this situation. It said this to us, quote, we had set up an internal procedure for RMAs for these model numbers based on serial range to make sure the customer would get the right version for their cables. Typically, the customer just sends the brick back to us and they leave the cables in there. The procedure was in place and also stated that if for some reason EVGA did not have the correct models, customer service would send the customer a full G5 power supply, meaning with cables, with a note to let them know that they would need to upgrade their power supply so everything matches. But where we fell short is that while this policy had been enforced for the year since the change happened, due to some internal operation error, the wrong power supply brick was sent to the customer. EVJ also noted that when a customer reports damage to customer service as a result of something like this or as a result of one of their products, they have a policy where that customer's case is supposed to be escalated to senior management or to basically a director level for resolution, but in this instance, uh, it was not escalated. EVGA said that it's in contact with the customer and it expects, quote, an amicable resolution to take care of his case. Uh, senior management told us that it has reviewed the points at which the policy fell apart internally for this and that it was uh, reviewing those with customer service teams to make sure it doesn't happen again. We also sent an email to the viewer. The viewer said this, quote, Thank you very much for getting a hold of EVGA about this. I did actually hear from a product manager there yesterday, and he seems genuinely apologetic and wanted to make the situation right. I forwarded him receipts showing the replacement cost of the two drives, and his latest response yesterday afternoon was, thank you for providing the extra information. Please allow me a little more time to work on this case and follow up with you. The viewer is restoring those backups, or will be as soon as they have new drives, and uh, is still finalizing the details with EVJ on the resolution itself. If for any reason at all this does not reach anything other than an acceptable or better solution, then we'll follow up on it again. Uh, most likely this is hopefully where the story ends and the customer's happy with it, um, but we're in contact with, uh, with the viewers, so if that's not the case, then we'll let you all know. Quick update filming after the factory 2. I just got word back from the viewer, and the viewer says that EVGA has resolved the issue to their satisfaction, replaced the drives, they worked everything out. Now for some quick commentary. So a few things here. First of all, just with this specific issue, this is clearly extremely negligent on part of the company. It's great to have policy. It's very important. If, if we take that comment at face value that basically there are policies, but due to a process error, they weren't followed, which to me sounds like maybe, a, a, I don't know, they've had a lot of turnover. They've lost most of their staff. Anyone who's still there, not really sure how overworked they are, how experienced they are, uh, it's a skeleton crew. And so whatever the case That's may be, incredible. it sounds like if we believe there was a policy, it just wasn't followed. And the best way to solve that is to not need the policy. And if you have something like the, the pinout changes and you're aware of it, to me at least, the sort of most uh, anxiety-reducing solution to this problem would be to say, okay, the policy is if a customer has this power supply, any serial range, any year of production, you replace the whole thing. The cables, you tell them they have to replace the cables. It really seems like the best solution would be, you know, sorry for the inconvenience. We need you to replace all of it. Unfortunately, again, EVJ is basically in skeleton crew status. This is something everyone's known for quite a while now. They left GPUs very publicly. 
the motherboard team left. I mean, we filmed basically their exit interview where uh, the two best firmware developers there went to ASRock, as I understand, or maybe one of them and one went to another company. And we filmed that with Kingpin alongside them. So I bring that up because we've had people email uh, recently, actually, about the EVGA motherboards not getting 14th gen firmware updates, which doesn't surprise us at all uh, because there's no one there to do it. So, you know, it's, it's sad. It, that's the status the company's in now. And losing all the experienced talent means we, we would expect a couple things. First of all, uh, my contacts there haven't changed, and I, I do believe in full faith that they do want to do the right thing for people based on what I'm hearing. Um, the reality is that EVGA is in a reduced capacity to do the right thing, whether that's literal availability of resources or just things like you may want to support the boards, but if there's no team to do it, what do you do? There's not really a solution. So we would expect a reduced level of service, even if the intention is good. Um, and, and certainly they are beyond the sort of same day repairs we documented in our EVGA finale in the RMA facility in Taiwan. On the positive side, again, talking with the contacts at EVGA, the company does still seem to exhibit uh, a desire to maintain the core values of supporting customers. Uh, but again, it just, it's not at the same heights it was. They're extremely lucky in this instance that the customer had backups because that would have been catastrophic. Uh, lesson for you all is keep backups of your information. Anyway, that's the update to the EVGA story. So moving on to the Apple one. The U.S. Department of Justice is suing Apple over monopolistic behavior and for what it says is violation of antitrust laws. Uh, this is in a press release from the DOJ, which wrote, quote, Apple's broad-based exclusionary conduct makes it harder for Americans to switch smartphones, undermines innovation for apps, products, and services, and imposes extraordinary costs on developers, businesses, and consumers. Attorney General Merrick B. Garland elaborated, saying, quote, consumers should not have to pay higher prices because companies violate antitrust laws. Uh, it's a, a hot take, but we'll see how it goes. Adding, quote, we allege that Apple has maintained monopoly power in the smartphone market, not simply by staying ahead of the competition on its merits, but by violating federal antitrust no, law. Right. If left unchallenged, Apple will oh, only continue to strengthen its smartphone monopoly. The Justice Department will vigorously enforce antitrust oh, laws that protect consumers from higher prices and fewer choices. That is the Justice Department's legal obligation and what the American people expect and deserve. Now, going through some specific potential anti-competitive behavior over the years, Tile, the maker of the smart tracker device, complained that Apple engaged in anti-competitive behavior with the company, saying that iOS 13.5 was designed to, to favor Apple's competing Find My app over its own solution by disabling the device's tracking capabilities by default, forcing users to dig through menus to enable it. Apple would then release its own competing AirTag tracker. Other potential anti-competitive behavior involves Apple forcing credit card companies to go through Apple Pay, where Apple would take a cut on transactions. In addition, Spotify filed a legal complaint against Apple where it stated the company's 30% revenue split was unfair and said that it also limited Spotify's ability to communicate with its customers about promotional deals that they can take advantage of outside of Apple's platform. Sounds very familiar to the next one, which is Epic. Similarly, on the gaming side, Apple has been involved in a legal battle against Epic Games for the past several years now, with sort of a conclusion in at least one of those battles. The Fortnite dev complained about Apple's 30% cut and being prevented from releasing its Epic Games Store on iOS devices. That legal battle did incur a court-ordered injunction against Apple that states Apple wouldn't be able to implement anti-steering measures, which means that companies would be allowed to promote the sale of their goods and services on iPhones beyond Apple's walled ecosystem that would circumvent Apple's 30% cut. Recently, however, big companies like Meta, Microsoft, X, and Match Group say that Apple is in violation of this new injunction. There's also the whole iMessage thing, where images and videos from Android users would get compressed and degraded so much when sent to Apple users that they looked like they were shot on literal potatoes, which, while delicious, especially in wedge format, 
don't shoot very good photos. Videos, however... Moving on, Assistant Attorney General Jonathan Cantor of the Justice Department's Antitrust Division stated, quote, for years, Apple responded to competitive threats by imposing a series of whack-a-mole contractual rules and restrictions that have allowed Apple to extract higher prices from consumers, impose higher fees on developers and creators, and to throttle competitive alternatives from rival technologies. He added, quote, today's lawsuit seeks to hold Apple accountable and ensure it cannot deploy the same unlawful playbook in other vital markets. The obvious thing to point out is that Apple isn't anywhere near a literal monopoly in the sense of uh, iOS versus Android or just phone distribution in general, where Android maintains an extremely healthy and strong market share overall. But the monopolistic accusations are related to antitrust issues in general, where Apple is behaving in such a way as to be functionally predatory of its own customers. It locks them into an ecosystem. It makes it difficult or impossible to maintain the integrity of that user's uh, basically life as it lives on their phone if they want to move over to a different platform like Android. And so that's kind of the crux of the issue here. Uh, and these issues also lead to increased unnecessary e-waste and increased unnecessary spending due to those predatory lock-ins. It's just wholesale bad for the consumer. If the DOJ is successful with this lawsuit, it could send some shivers down the spines of some of the gigantic technology corporations uh, as they continue to uh, capture their customer base. And in particular, we were thinking NVIDIA might be paying very close attention to this, especially with its current situation in the AI space. Gaming, it's got plenty of market share, but AI is where there's still this evolution of licenses and contracts, uh, potential for lock-ins, uh, potential for these walled gardens, as Apple is all often uh, referred to as having. And so NVIDIA may be paying very close attention to this one for those reasons. Now, this would mark the third time that the Justice Department has sued Apple in the past 14 years, but the third time is the charm, as we all know. Uh, Return of the King, Return of the Jedi, both famous thirds. This one, the Return of the Lawsuit. Looking forward to seeing how it goes. Next story, sort of a roundup of recent RTX 50 series rumors. There have been a number of them over the past two weeks now, so we just put them all into one story. Uh, and of course, as the Blackwell GPU got detailed,